Hi viewers, I am creating these videos to help teachers of math support their learners in making sense of mathematical concepts and their associated procedures and processes. And today I thought I'd have a look at multiplication of negative numbers. Um, and I've got my double-sided counters here to help me. I'm also going to use my algebra tiles because there are a couple of different models for multiplication that we might use here. Uh, and that will depend on uh, whether we're using the counters, using the tiles, or whichever models for multiplication pupils are familiar with. So let's have a look at a multiplication to start with. Let's have a look at something like negative 3 times 5. And of course, for something like this, a repeated addition argument will work quite nicely. Here is negative 3. And then here is that repeated five times, perhaps to create an array, or I could just uh, you know, carry that on five times. And we can see there that we've got negative 15. And you know, there's no real sort of conceptual leaps for pupils there. If they're used to seeing three times five in this way, then they'll be used to seeing negative three times five in this way. The slightly trickier one then comes from when we try and change this around to say negative three times negative five. And what we're going to do here is if we're going to work with counts in this way, we're going to bridge the gap. And the way we're going to bridge the gap is to say, well, this negative three times five is the same as 5 times negative 3. And so, and again, you know, as long as pupils are, are happy with the commutativity of multiplication here, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and so what we're going to do is say, right, well, if this is also 5 times negative 3, then we're going to treat, what we're going to look for is how to make that the negative of five times negative three. And what pupils need to be familiar with here is how if we take a single counter, then to make that counter into its negative, we flip it over. So this is the negative of whatever the yellow counter is. And I'm not necessarily saying a yellow side is one at this point, because we won't necessarily always have yellow side as one. But whatever value the yellow side has, this is the negative of it. And then this is once again the negative of that. So the reds and the yellows are the negative of each other. Now, if we're happy with that, and we're happy with that this represents five times negative three, then simply the negative of five times negative three is simply all of those flipped over. And we can make sense of the fact that, you know, this is the negative of what we had before. And so we're going to flip everything over. And that's why that comes out as positive 15. And this, of course, is the same as that. It's just uh, the commutative law applied again to multiplication here, to this multiplication in particular. And so negative 3 times negative 5 is the same as negative 5 times negative 3, which is 15. Okay. Uh, alternatively, what I could do here is I could use my algebra tiles and I could use my ones and my negative ones in a very similar way to the way that I've just done. But there are there is a potential alternative uh, in something like this. And it, it might well serve pupils to have seen this, even if you don't like to introduce negative multiplication in this way, and in particular, the multiplication of two negative values in this way, because it can be helpful later if you're going to explore sort of algebraic expressions involving variables, and you're going to use negatives in those using the tiles, it can be a helpful sort of thing here. Now, what I've done to begin with is set up my horizontal and vertical as an axis, and there are pros and cons to setting it up as an axis. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I've talked about some of those in my in some of my other videos. Uh, what I would say is, if you are going to use an axis style with your negative tiles, then it can be beneficial for pupils to potentially have seen something like this first. And this is available on the same site as the manipulatives. And the major reason for that is for pupils to understand that, 
you know, the, the positives will appear up here down here. The negatives will appear up here down here. Now, technically, they don't need to see this first because you could feasibly introduce that in this uh, using this um, sort of model. But, you know, it may be that if pupils have seen that first, it can be helpful. Now, actually, in order to sort of model my negative calculations here, I'm going to start with a positive calculation because it's a couple of gaps that I'm going to bridge. So I'm going to start with the positive calculation three times five. And if we know something about axes, then we know that I can put one of those numbers along my horizontal axis. And in fact, I'm just going to put the three along there just because I like to keep with the pattern of first number is horizontal, second number is vertical. And so my five will go up there. And so what I'm doing here is creating a three by five area, which is going to have a total area of 15. This rectangular area will be the result of this multiplication, will be the product and will be 15. And then I'm going to say, right, well, what if this five is not five? What if it is, uh, let's say, negative five? Well, let's not put that in there, actually. Let's put it underneath. So what if I change that five to be negative five? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull all five of these down here. Or potentially just put five negative ones in. It doesn't matter. But as soon as they cross that axis, they have to flip over to be my negative five. And now I've got a three by negative five. And I know either because I've looked at this before or perhaps I've explored with other models that those this space has to be filled with negative tiles so this is negative 15 and then i can say okay well what about negative 3 times negative 5 and now of course it's i'm bringing my negative three in fact it doesn't like me dragging some of those ones let's just put that over there for a minute i'm bringing this three over here to become negative three and again if i've seen something like this previously or if i've worked with them and they're different worked with them using the double-sided counters then or I've just been told potentially that here and here are where positive areas are, then I can see that that is where the positive 15 is going to be. And similarly, negative 15 would be here for negative 3 times 5. So this, one, this is potentially you might not want to introduce multiplying negatives by this because it seems perhaps a little circular in terms of I've, I've either got to define that this is where positive areas will be and this is where positive areas and conversely negative and negative or I've got to kind of look at the patterns in these multiplications already and establish where the positives and negatives go before I can use this grid to sort of create those multiplications. What I can do, if I'm not setting up as an axis, which may be a way to start before moving to the axis, is to say, right, well, if I start again with 3 times 5, then that's clearly 15, and that's fine. And then what I can say is, well, what happens if this 5 becomes negative 5? And notice there's no directional element to these lines anymore. They are just framing my rectangle. They are framing my two factors to create my product. Well, what I can say is if these 5 all become negative 5, then the effect that that has is to flip 
everything in the row of the thing that we flip so we flip this one to be a negative one so that's going to flip everything in this row and similarly we flip this one to be a negative one so that's going to be a flip for everything in this row and so on as we go down we're going to flip everything in that row Oh, didn't want to do that. There we go. And so that's sort of motivating the three times negative five equals negative 15 kind of idea. And then what I can say is, right, well, what happens if I now change the three into a negative three? Well, because I'm changing the things at the top of the columns this time, that's going to change everything flip everything in that column just like when i changed something to the left hand side of the row it flipped everything in the row now when i flip that in the column and again it's not liking it there it's reading the thing first but if i flip that column it flips everything in that column and then finally if i flip that column it flips everything in that column And so we can see there that because we have an effect flipped every row, but then every column, we flipped every number twice. So they flip once to negative 15 and then they flip back again to 15. And this might even be a precursor to the idea of introducing that on the axis. I could do some with them set up like this and say, OK, now now we know a little bit more about this. Let's imagine we have this set up as an axis in the in a sort of standard axis positive, positive, negative, negative, where are the positive areas going to be? Where are the negative areas going to be? And that could potentially lead into this. So if you were going to do something like that with algebra tiles, it may benefit you to start just with this framing the product. So the product will appear here where the factors appear there, and then use that to bridge towards actually setting them up on an axis where positive numbers will only ever go right and up negative numbers will only ever go left and down so there's a couple of potential ways that we could introduce multiplication of negatives and negative values to our learners and help them make sense of in particular why a negative multiplied by a positive will always result in a negative and conversely why a negative multiplied by a negative will always result in a positive um, as always, I'd like to say a big thank you to MassBot.com and its creator, Jonathan Hall, for providing this fantastic website where I can access all these virtual manipulatives to help support making these videos as well as supporting my own learners. But there is so much more on this website as well. And if you haven't had a chance yet to go and dig into that website and really see what is there, I would very strongly suggest that you do. It's a great website. There is loads of stuff on there to make teaching maths easier, and it is being updated all of the time. Uh, as always as well, if you are interested in using uh, visuals, manipulatives to help your learners in making sense of mathematical concepts, then I would suggest you check out my website. That is visiblemaths.co.uk. And uh, if you go to that website, among the many things you'll find on there is you'll find a link to my book, which is Visible Maths. And uh, there's a link there to the publisher, Crown House Publishing. And on the Crown House Publishing website, you can see some sample pages. And if you uh, feel like it would be a useful addition to your library, then you can, of course, place an order. I'll be making these videos throughout lockdown and potentially beyond. So if there is a particular concept or process or procedure that you feel like you would like to see modeled with manipulatives or visuals, then please do get in touch and I will hopefully find time to create it for you. Thank you very much for your kind attention.